Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video, but I'm back today and we've jumped back into Clue Land and we're looking at M3 Green today. Green, four and green for a 3 3 human advisor. I like M3 Green though because I like cards that make people make decisions and this is a voting card. Um, so when you attack with M3 Green, everyone votes, starting with ourselves. Um, and depending who votes for what depends what you get so people who vote for profit um, for everyone who gets profit you get twice the number of profit votes in treasure tokens and if everyone votes for security you get to put a whole number of plus one plus one counters so put a number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control equal to the number of security votes now depending how your deck is looking and what you've got in play it's very likely you're going to get a whole load of treasure early in the game if you get MS3 green out early and later in the game people are going to be going we don't know which one to give you um because treasure is going to mean your deck gets more stuff out which is hard for us to deal with and then security makes all the things we've got out that are hard to deal with even more hard to deal with we don't know what to do they will get confused and they will get distressed about it maybe um but anyway i like msc green I haven't done a mono green commander for a while and obviously the clue cards i liked you yeah, know bonus video last week with the commander um go back watch that on friday if you haven't um you know because you can subscribe to the channel down here and come and see all my videos going forward and help me out and get to my 500 target by the end of the year so anyway enough of the sales pitch this is what the deck looks like for ms3 green today so usually is now where i go through my mana base um yeah forests so the only non-forest evolving wilds fabled passage and somewhere down here myriad landscape and terramorphic expanse it's a mono green deck you don't need much fanciness in here um we have got some artifact ramp tantalite talisman soul ring um the arcane signets here emerald Di medallion and moss diamond that's it from that point of view um, but we have got a lot of spells that have come to that help us get our mana out. So, you know, we're only playing 35 lands, I will point that out, but it is a mono deck, and a lot of the stuff you've got sort of taps out mana value three or less. So, um, hopefully, they'll be give you enough, but, you know, you can always pull some cards out, but with what we've got in the deck, don't think we're going to need to worry about it. So, one drops, ramp card, Arbor Elf, followed by Mystic Elf, followed by Fire Lord Elves, followed by Lamoir Elf. They're all here, the Elves are here, they're going to ramp us through it. Um, I've included Collective Voyage because you know you can basically empty most of your lands out of your deck with this early in the game. Yes, it pops off and gives all your you know all the people you're playing against um, a bit of help. But if you've got a few people who are short on lands, you can make a bargain with them. Go right, I'm going to cast Collective Voyage. I'm going to pump all my mana into it. You can't attack me for two turns. Nine times out of ten, most people will do that. So bear that in mind. Um, Concord and Crossroads is here because I need to make sure we had a way of giving Emissary Green haste on the turn they come into play. Um, it is dangerous. I'm not going to argue about that. It's a world enchantment. Everybody gets a benefit from the Crossroads. Um, so be careful if you're playing it. But at the end of the day, we want Emissary Green to come in and attack. We have got other ways of doing it, but yeah, attacking is kind of key with we'll them. Um, obviously, because we're playing plus one, plus one kind of deck, we've got the hardened scales here and a few of the other cards you would be expecting to see in any other plus one plus one deck alexia of immortality makes an appearance as well just because well why not shuffle everything back in when it gets killed off um uh, two drops elvish fishery for bit card draw gala greeters gives us some treasure or some plus one plus one counters or a bit of life if we're short gaia sage is just so we can pump out some extra mana hopefully we can get this evolving quite quickly here comes some of the ramp spells we've got nature's law Rampant Growth, Steve, or yeah, Secure a Tried Elbow if you want to, but I think everyone in the world calls him Steve, like we do over here in the UK. Um, and three visits kind of help us ramp that side of thing. I did miss Prosper's Innkeeper out, because yes, it gives us a treasure when it comes into play, but it's a tiny bit of life gain that could help. We have the Lightning Greaves and the Boots as well to make sure that MC Green has some protection and can do the attack it turn comes in to start the voting process. Three drops, Beastmaster Ascension. Attack with a lot of creatures, your creatures come in, they become very big eventually when you get seven counters on here. Yep, it's a bit brainless in a mono green deck, but it's here. Branching Evolution, the card that just, just 
does things lovely with plus one plus one counters love it cultivate another bit of ramp spell um elvish rejuvenate go and find a land oh look here chances are it will be a forest um <laughs> entage restoration is also here this is quite nice we do have creatures that have power four or more um so sacking off something like a useless evolving wilds could be the way to go with this and get three basic lands onto the battlefield tapped um yeah thin your deck out quickly farhaven elf gives us another basic land growing rights of Inmatech gives us a cheap version of gaia's cradle i mean if you've got gaia's cradle i did think about putting one in here but i've left it out for my mtgo collection i might update it when i stream this deck later this week um but yeah growing rights of Inmatech, it uh, i keep getting it wrong it lamok sorry is pretty good still Cameo with Whispered Hopes does the whole let's make sure the plus one plus one counts to become even more. Nissa just gives us a little bit of A landfall mana ramp and then B gives and finds us one of the elves that we might need to help us win the game. So yeah, they're here. There's another version of Nissa as well that turns into the Planeswalker from Origin, so we can go and fetch a basic forest and put it in our hand, then shuffle. That's fine. Um, and once we hit the seven landmark, we get to transform this version of Nissa, so that's all good to me. Search for tomorrow, suspend so on turn one, find a land on turn three. Wood Elves, yep, go and get Forest, put it into play. Nissa, Voice of Zendikar, is here purely to do a little bit of tar plant token blockerage, and then eventually just to get up to the minus seven with a bit of luck. Um, we may use the minus two occasionally, especially when we've got things like branching evolution out or the hardened scales, but most of the time um we're going to be doing the plus one and hopefully trying to get up to the minus seven tribute to the world tree puts lots of plus one plus one counters on creatures and academy manufacturer yeah we're going to be getting treasures with emissary green at some stage we might as well get some clues and some food while we're at it as well a bit more land ramp in the invasion of zendikar and if we can get it transformed into the awakened skyclave all the better parallel lives yeah okay more treasures and foods and things lovely um rampant rejuvenate is nice just get when it dies we go and fetch all those basic lands out of our library tributary instructor because a lot of our creatures will have plus one plus one counters on them and then when they die we get to draw cards um venture forth does the whole let's go and find a land from the top of our library and then go back and spend land Axe Bind Ferox from MKM, um, Death Touch and Haste for a 4 mana for a 4-4 four, four, and has an interesting ward ability. Um, yeah, still not sure how well it's going to work, but a 4-4 four, four with Haste and Death Touch seems a bit too good to pass up on. A 4-4 four, four that drives us, draws us cards when we play off the creature spell, so it is very good, I know that for a fact. Um, and like this 4-4, four, four, makes sure that we have another way of giving something haste if we need it to have haste. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with that. Helm of the Host, yeah, playtest this deck once. I got Helm of the Host equipped for Emissary Green, and having two or three Emissary Greens in play is kind of scary, to say the least. When they attack, you have to vote for each one, and oh, it gets very scary very quickly. Still think Helm of the Host is one of the best equipments ever printed in my mind, but there you go. Anyway, doubling season. Double up on our tokens, double up on our counters as well, which is lovely. Um, kind of key with the embassy. Jahira's a respite. This is a new one. Uh, this comes in from uh, Commander's Legends, Baldur's Gate. That's it. Sorry, I couldn't remember what the second part was. New Commander Legends. Like this card. Um, five mana. Expensive. Search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the number of creatures attacking you, and put those into play tapped, and then prevent all the fog. Basically, yeah. Fun card, haven't played with it much yet. Thought this might be a good deck to try it out in, so it's here. Defiler of Vigor um, means that we pay life instead of green mana for one of the things. Get some plus one, plus one counters, and everybody's happy in the game. Verdurus Gearhulk coming back in from Kaldesh. Um, yeah, chuck around some more plus one, plus one counters. Obviously, if you've got something like Hardened Scales in play, this becomes silly because it chucks around eight. Um, and then branching evolution will make it chuck round even more. 16, maybe? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, then. Good fun. Um, Voron clicks. Actually, just straight up normal Voron clicks. Um, yeah. Comes into play. Two forests. Put them into. Reveal them. Put them in your hand. Then shuffle. Okay. Yeah. Five mana. Two forests in hand. Mm, better if they went into play, but okay. Um, 
probably they don't go into play because that means next turn you would be actually guaranteed to um, exile Voron clicks and make the thing terrible and turn it into the Grand Evolution, which would be... Um, yeah, whichever way you look at it, it's still good. Anyway, um, Conclave Siege Sledge Captain it comes into play, does the whole backup thing, and then gets loads of plus one, plus one counters. Bane of Progress is here to control the artifacts and enchantments we see. Um, Surak and Goreclaw also make an appearance here, give all other creatures trample haste, and then non-token creatures come into play with a plus one, plus one on them, and haste. Yeah, okay, like that. Um, this version of Onclix is basically um, doubling season on a creature. So, yep, have this one here as well. And the guff, Gruff Triplets. Don't think this card has seen enough play yet in Commander. It is silly. Especially with the amount of... If we can play this after we've at least got like something like um, Parallel Lives, Doubling Seizing Down, even one of or the Voron Clicks, Monstrous Raider that we were just talking about earlier. Having that come into play... Um, when one of those in play means you get a lot of little tokens and our gruff triplets becomes very big very quickly and it scares people really does scare people big time ancient imperosaur is just a convoke creature we have in the deck um we will try and convoke it a lot trample ward and then plus two plus two plus one plus one counts for each creature that convoked it's pretty good a lot of ramp going on in the deck. Lots of lands coming to play. Avenger of Zendikar is a bit of a no-brainer. And Old Norborn because I just wanted a green dragon in the deck more than anything else. And this one gives me treasure tokens when it connects. So why not? The final two cards in the deck. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Yep, that's fine. We'll do that with the elves and everything else we have in play. Giving everything plus X, plus X and trample till the end of turn. Is going to be something that hopefully wins us the game especially if we've got um, this in play and then we cast this for lots and lots of mana. Empty your library out, get all your creatures in play, make sure you stack the triggers in the right order and um, yeah, win there and then. That's how I won my test game. I was very cheesy. I think Genesis Wave went off for X's 12, if I remember correctly. I had 15 mana kicking around between everything I had in play and yeah, I hit a whole load of creatures and then I also hit Concord and Crossroads and Crate Hoof Behemoth. And yeah, it was very good for me. Very good for me. But that's it for today. Um, oh, why is Crate Hoof Behemoth still there? Hold on a second. That's better. That's a lot better. Right. That's my take on M3 Green. I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I say, it's a very nice, simple deck, especially I think it's going to be really relevant if you're building something for someone who's just starting out. There's lots of different ways to build M3 Green. Gets them to understand some of the intricacies a little bit of um, commander play. So, hope you enjoyed this. I'll be back tomorrow with another actual straight one from, well, it's from MKM Commander. So, keep your eyes open for that because, you know, you've hit the subscribe button down here now. You've hit the bell icon. You know when things are going to happen. Um, and you're going to come watch me play on Twitch. There's a link to my Twitch down below in the description. So, hopefully I'll see you on Twitch very soon. But if not, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you come back and watch another one. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.